Hey, what's going on, Archons? Welcome to another episode of Key Thoughts, my weekly vlog by the fire. It's now the fireside chat. This is the new way I'm gonna do it. I'm loving it. I think everyone else is too. I got, of course, my man's fuzzy with me. And uh, this week I have a couple interesting things that I want to talk about of what I've been musing about this week in Keyforge. Uh, but first, what I would like to go through is the card of the week. That's right, this week we have Blast from the Past. Uh, this is an Italian version of it because I pulled it from my Italian deck that I've been playing recently and getting some insight on. And why do I love this card? I think it is an unsung hero. And what it says is it's a play action that has the ability uh, to archive a Saurian creature from your discard, put it into your archives, and then deal damage equal to that creature's power to an enemy creature. Why do I like this? Well, for one reason, Pterodactyl, okay? I like it for Pterodactyl. That's 12 damage you can throw on something that you do not have to worry about. I even like it with Pterodactyl by discarding Pterodactyl and doing it or other creatures. I also like it because of the fact that you have the opportunity to basically take a creature that you do like and they're sorry inside what probably means they're about five or six power and hit something. It's just really nice. Even just the archiving capability of getting that recursion of a good Saurian creature is really nice. Never mind that it's also doing damage. So I like this card a lot for its utility. It's been putting in a lot of work for me lately when I've been playing with a deck. So I really appreciate it for that. And um, if you haven't really thought about it, think about it because it is the card of the week. Now, the topic that I want to talk about for this week is there's two topics. The first one is actually about the concept of a deck quest. I think I've mentioned this before, uh, definitely on the podcast, I believe. And what I wanted to talk about in the deck quest is the idea of finding a deck and doing so using the search parameters on DOK. So something I've done and uh, it helped me acquire a DAV deck actually, because I had this amazing DAV deck. Some of you may have heard of it and I sold it. Got a good price for it, couldn't say no. It has since been sold again. So it definitely holds value and is fantastic. And with this deck, after I sold it, I love the deck, but I mean, there's certain things that um, you can't say no to, and there's a dollar value to that. So I sold it for that reason, but I wanted a deck that was similar. So I went into DOK and I found a deck. Well, I found decks, plural, because I knew certain things I wanted. Like there was houses I wanted. So I kind of started off looking for the Dark Ember Vault, then the houses that existed, and then from there, I couldn't go too much more specific, but you obviously can. You can set up notifications and whatnot. But I kind of just went from there with the houses and then looked for certain things that met my criteria in that way because that narrowed it down. Now, if you have a ton of decks that show up just by going houses, obviously something like Dark Ember Vault only appeared in Mass Mutation, so there's not going to be a ton of decks that are for sale and fit that category. So I was able to kind of narrow it down that way. And from there, I basically had the opportunity to see what was available. Now, if the parameter becomes even bigger, then you start going for specific cards that you really want. For me, Vault's Blessing was kind of a must. Like, I love Vault's Blessing. One of my favorite cards, I think, in Mass Mutations. And I noticed that that's what I needed, so I made sure Vault's Blessing was one of the other cards. And then I kind of just went from there and found the best candidates. You can always add more cards if you want to get more specific, if you're really looking for something particular. But you gotta understand, like, Keyforge is not a game where you can build a deck, essentially. So you've gotta have some leeway with what you're looking for and what you want. And you can go certain ways where you go, I'm not gonna actually take this house, I'm gonna take some other houses instead. And I think I did that. I think I did two of the three houses, is what I did. And then from there, I looked what I found. And I didn't find anyone that had the exact same three houses, a lot of the same cards, to the point where um, Scrowner was the guy who bought the deck from me originally. And uh, the other day I played with him uh, using this replacement deck and he was like, what the heck? How did you find this? Because it's very similar. It's not as powerful. It requires a lot more thinking, but it has the feel of that deck. Like it does some of the things you liked from that deck. So when you're looking for a deck and you're going on that quest to find it, it could be because you see something out there that you really like, but maybe it's priced out. It's like more than you want to spend, or maybe it's like on the really high end of competitive and you see the elements of it that you really like. And you can go try and find a different version of that. Maybe it's not even for sale. That's the other parameter. Maybe you just look at decks that exist and they're not for sale 
And then you see those things, you test the deck maybe even on TCO and you realize, wow, I like this. I want to find something like this. And then you create those parameters and you go for it. That's a really fun thing you can do with DOK. And uh, I really enjoy doing that. I really like actually utilizing the search function for DOK and looking for different types of decks that meet different parameters. I was recently on a similar idea, but this was more specific because I was looking for chase cards to fill out my uh, collection in terms of chase cards that were missing. Most notably, I got my Khalifi Dragon deck, Blake the Awesome. Yeah, that's right. And um, the other topic I wanted to talk about today is on the idea of selecting decks for certain formats. Now, obviously there's certain decks that meet the requirements for some formats more specifically than others. Uh, most notably, obviously, Reversal. But uh, aside from Reversal, you have as well uh, best of three formats. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I actually think there are some decks that are very, very well suited for the best of three format. Now you may ask, what are these decks, Blake? Well, these decks that I'm speaking of are decks that have a high roll capability. So they can do very powerful things, but there is a degree of RNG that you need to make it work. These are the decks that are best suited for best of three, in my opinion. You know they can go off when they do, they're very oppressive, they're very powerful, but if you miss some of these key components, the deck could just flop. And that's where you need your best of three action because that gives you multiple opportunities to roll into what you need. If you get that one bad draw, you don't have to worry about it. You can get it back. It's really nice and adaptive, I think, too, because your opponent may not realize that that high roll is what really makes the deck tick. So when you flip it around, they may not play well with it, and that gives you an opportunity to uh, further play your deck and maybe give theirs with some change if you lost the first game. So it just provides some depth of play and some more opportunity to see what you need come forward. So that's why I'm thinking about these, I think combo decks, like de depending on your degree of how you can, well you can execute it, but if you need a high roll, like some combo decks are really nice for best of three because that gives you that opportunity to get those combos more than in just you have one game, if it doesn't hit, you're done. So that's my thoughts for this week and I'm curious your thoughts. What are your thoughts, especially on my best of three idea? Like, do you think this idea makes sense? Do you have another philosophy for a best of three? Do you think you should be playing your most consistent deck in best of three? Because it's going to hit every time. So that's um, that's what I'm thinking. But I, I also do strongly feel that decks that require a level of RNG are best suited for multi-games and not the singular. So let me know your thoughts. And uh, as always, may your ember never be stolen and your keys forged properly. Have a good one.